What it do? Bedtime crew. Hey man, listen, today I'm here to talk about the UFC 299 fights to make after the event. These are all the fights that I want to see from the big winners and some of the losers from UFC 299. Obviously, it was a great card. If you didn't see my reaction video to it, go check that video out. You get to see my live reactions to my boy Curtis Blades winning, my boy JDM winning, and of course the fluky flukster Cheeto Vera did not get the W, so my prayers were answered. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about what fights I want to see after this event. Let's get straight into it. On the prelims, Robellus Despain. This guy got a huge W against, uh, what's the guy's name? Josh Parisian. Sent him back to the barnyard. Good luck, buddy. You know, uh, I heard that he just got cast in the, in the live action back to the barnyard. So obviously he's moving on to bigger and better things after losing to Rebellus to Spain. But as for what next for to Spain, honestly, I'm thinking I want to see him take on the blob. I need to see this guy get blob checked. A lot of people are talking about, oh, to Spain's going to get fraud checked, me included. But before I see that, I need to see him get blob checked, bro. I need to see him handle the pure mass, the pure size of Shamil Gaziev. Um, all jokes aside, I think the wrestling threat would be interesting to see. Shamil Gaziev did eat some big shots <laughs> from, from Jozinho Rosenstrike when they fought. <laughs> and he does have a decent chin. <laughs> Maybe we could see him go more than one round. It would be a very interesting matchup. As for when this fight could take place, maybe UFC 300 would be a good fight. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do this, bro. I can't fucking do this. Um, but yeah, he should fight Shamil Gazi. Okay, let's move on. Michelle Pejera picked up a huge win against Miguel Olejecek. Round one submission choked him out. It was a beautiful performance. Crazy knees to the body as well. I was really impressed with how he handled that because... Even the commentary was like, oh, he should have followed up to the body, but he just latched up a choke straight away, got the finish. Very well done for Michelle Pereira. They were talking about him fighting in the rankings. I do want to see him fight a ranked opponent, but there's just nobody available. Uh, when you look at the rankings, you know, Paul Craig's booked up. Cal Barajo's booked up. Hamza Chemaev's not going to fight down. Brendan Allen, Mom Vittori. All these guys are booked up, unless you want to shoot him up into the top 10 against uh, Roman Delidze, which I do think is a bit of a jump. I want to see Joe Pfeiffer, the salty man himself, take on Michelle Pereira. Winner of this definitively will have time to get a top 15 opponent, maybe a top 10 opponent because that's what the UFC clearly wants for Pfeiffer. I think Michelle Pereira wins this fight, to be honest. He just seems more explosive over longer distances. Like over the longer a fight goes, I trust Michelle Pereira a lot more than I trust Joe Pfeiffer to get a win. But the winner of this is seriously looking at a top 10 opponent because both of these guys are very promising prospects at middleweight. I think this is a very exciting matchup. This could definitely be the co-main event to an apex fight night. This could be the, you know, this could be the featured fight of a fight night in front of a crowd, which every fight night should be from now on. Um, but yeah, I want to see Joe Pfeiffer versus Michelle Pereira. I'm not, I'm surprised it's not fucking featured on UFC 300 considering they got Bo Nickel on there, which is ridiculous. I might do a video about that, but that is crazy. That he's above me, Charles Oliveira. But moving on, speaking of being above Charles Oliveira, Mateus Gamrot, the lightweight GOAT, picked up another dominant victory over Rafi Dos Nachos. And he needs a big fight next. When you look up the rankings, he can't really fight Dustin Poirier, their training partners. He ain't fighting Gaethje, little bro. He ain't fighting Islam, even though he should he, even though he's Islam's worst nightmare. I think he should fight down the rankings, and I think he should fight a main event against Dan Hooker. I think this is a big fight to do. Maybe for that Australia card in August. I'm gonna talk about that later. Obviously, there's other fights to be made for that, but I think Mateus Gamrot versus Dan Hooker is an interesting matchup. Dan Hooker has good jujitsu, especially good defensive jujitsu. He's hard to take down. He's impossible to to knock out, basically. And I think he's going to be a really dangerous matchup for Gamera, especially over five rounds. I think there's more and more time in that fight for, get, for Dan Hooker to find a knee to the chin, to find a big right hook, to find an uppercut. And if you're getting dropped by RDA, Dan Hooker is a dangerous matchup for you. Plus, he has his nasty guillotine. I think this would be a huge fight to add to maybe a pay-per-view. Or like I said, this could headline a card in Australia. This could headline a card in New Zealand. I think uh, Dan Hooker versus Mateus Gamro is a pretty smart next move to do for the UFC. Let's move on to another big fight. My boy, Curtis Blades, the caveman himself, bounced back like a volleyball trust. And he got a huge W. 
knocked out Jailton Almeida, finally cleared out the division. And honestly, I know it's a meme, but I genuinely think... Uh, bro, I ain't mad at this fight for the interim title. Like, uh, does, does Cyril Gunn deserve another title shot? No. No, he doesn't, is the answer. No, he doesn't. Cyril Gunn beat Sergei Spivak, all right? Curtis Blades just knocked out Jelton Almeida, who was on a 15-fight win streak. I don't give a fuck. That's impressive, dude. I know he's probably going to sell this fight. He's going he's gonna to fucking throw himself on a plate and get cooked in this fight, but I don't care. They have unfinished business. He Mateus Gamrotted, Tom Aspinall, destroyed him in the UK, owns the UK. I think we need to see the rematch for the interim title. I think there's a really good idea to do this in the UK. Maybe you put MVP versus somebody on that card. Maybe you put Leon versus Bilal on that card. You add Aspinall versus Blades. You're looking at a pretty good pay-per-view. Ian Gary on the card, Paddy Pimblett. You can look at a really good pay-per-view there. I might do a video for that, but I think Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades is justified. It makes sense. He called out Aspinall. They have all this unfinished business, all this promo. It's a good fight to give Aspinall if you're going to do Stipe versus Jones, which is stupid. But if you're going to do it, then let's do Aspinall versus Blades. As for Almeida, maybe Volkov or Spivak should be next for him, I think. Um, maybe the winner of Tibura versus Tuivas is a good matchup for him to bounce back. But if you want a competitive matchup, I think you should do uh, Almeida versus Spivak. All right, dude. Let's move on to the Bantamweight division. Song Yadong, Swaggy Song, my boy. Um, I know I said I wanted Yadong, but he didn't get the W, so I don't want him anymore. Um, I think he should take a little bit of a step down in competition. And the thing I hate when I make these videos is other people make these videos, or other people make comments about it, and you know, God, God loves a trier, yeah, God loves a trier. But they all do the same shit, bro. They all go, oh, dude, Song Yadong versus Cheeto, bro. Let's do Song versus Cheeto too, bro. Yeah, that's the fight to make. I don't give a fuck about Song versus Cheeto, bro. I don't care. Cheeto does not deserve to fight Song. Song just went life and death with Piotr Jan in the top five. He's a legit contender, but he needs a bit of a step down. I want to see Jonathan Martinez get a chance. I want to see Jonathan Martinez versus Song Yadong headline a fight night, maybe in China. Okay, a lot of people are telling me the UFC needs to go to China. A lot of people are telling me. And I like Dong. I like Dong. He's a very good fighter. He's he's a good fighter. And he's going to deport Jonathan Martinez. He's good. He's a very good fighter as well. All jokes aside, I think Song Yudong Jonathan Martinez is a fucking banger, dude. Or maybe you do Song Yudong versus Umar, but I'm thinking the winner of this can fight Umar. Or the winner of this can fight Corey Sanhagen. So Song Yudong Jonathan Martinez, in my opinion, is a better fight than doing Song versus Shido 2 which everyone else is going to say is what should be next. I think that's boring as fuck. I want to see Jonathan Martinez get a big fight. As for what's next for Piotr Jan. Listen, dude. Seriously, man. Listen, listen man. Jan, Jan's going to wear red, dude. He's going to wear red in the fight, guys. Seriously, man. He's going to wear gloves, man. I, I think he's going to come from Russia, dude. I really do, man. I, th I think he's going to train in Thailand, man. I really do. I think Henry Cejudo versus Piotr Jan is a fun fight to make next. You can't really do Jan versus Sanhagen 2. I don't really think that's a fight pe many people care about seeing. Obviously, Marab's probably going to fight for the belt next, so even if he doesn't get that title shot next, it's not going to be Marab versus Jan. You got 50 45 It's probably going to be Marab versus Corey for the number one contendership if, it, if it's Ilya versus Sean. So I think Sean, I think, uh, uh, what's his name? Piotr Jan versus Henry Cejudo is a much more interesting matchup. Two former champions, they were supposed to fight each other before Cejudo retired. I think this is a matchup the UFC has been low-key wanting to make. And I think it'd be a fun one. Doesn't have to be five rounds. Can put this on a fucking pay-per-view. You could put this on International Fight Week. I think that'd be a huge fight to add to it. Give me Piotr Jan versus Henry, the genius Cejudo. All right, dude. Let's move on to my boy JDM sparking out Gilbert Burns. And I have a genius idea for what's next for Gilbert Burns. A lot of people, again, they're going to make the same fucking fights, dude. They're all going to make the same fights. They're going to say, you know, Burns versus Gary. They might say Burns versus, I don't know, MVP or some shit like that. Burns versus Brady. I don't give a fuck, dude. I want to see Colby Covington finally take out Gilbert Burns. Don't you understand, bro? Don't you understand my genius at, at play here? Colby Covington versus Gilbert Burns is a fight we've all wanted to see, except for one problem. Gilbert Burns was in his prime. Now he's 38. 
He's coming off a KO loss and he's on a two-fight losing streak. Now he can fight Colby Covington. Now is the time for Colby to 50-45 this guy. Get a legacy win without any context. And keep the hype train rolling because Colby is getting the belt in 2025, guys. So this is the first step towards that. I think this is genius matchmaking. All jokes aside, dude, this makes a lot of sense. Colby looked like shit in his last fight. Gilbert Burns just got chinned. Colby Covington's not going to chin him. They don't like each other. They're big names. Put this as the main event of a fight night or add this to the co-main event of a pay-per-view. Problem solved. You're welcome, UFC. Do this fight, please. I really want to see it. Gilbert Burns, Colby Covington, I need this fight next. All right, dude. And obviously for JDM, um, yeah, you know, um, I want to fight, you know, Shavka. I think that'd be a good fight. You know, obviously, if I win, I get to smash Lorisenko. But, you know, it's not a big deal. Like, I don't really care. I need to see this fight, dude. And I think if they're doing an Australia card in August, this as a main event would be fucking fire, dude. Imagine five rounds of JDM. And Shavkat just beating the piss out of each other. I think that'd be crazy. It's either JDM chins him or Shavkat locks up a fluky flukester submission. And I'm going to be doing the flukiest UFC fighters tier list tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, guys. I was going to do it on the weekend, but I was super busy um, getting ready for my fight with Gilbert Burns. So thanks for the support, guys. But all jokes aside, these two in a 25-minute in a fight would be absolutely insane. The winner of this is getting a title shot after Bilal Muhammad destroys Leon Edwards. So... This is the obvious fight to make. I don't really need to elaborate on it. We all want to see it. Um, as for Ke uh, Kevin Holland, that's his name. Kevin Holland. Bro, absolutely sold against MVP. And when I look at the welterweight division, you've lost to MVP, who just debuted. You lost to JDM. Not bad losses. But your wins are like Alex Oliveira, Tim Means, kind of bottom feeders. So you have two options. You can stay at welterweight and you can fight probably Joaquin Buckley or Alex Morono or somebody like that. That's kind of like another mid-level guy at middleweight and not really do anything fancy or reasonable. I would say move up to middleweight and fight Chris Curtis. I think that's a solid idea because Kevin Holland, say what you want about his run at middleweight. He was pretty good at middleweight. He did get quite high in the rankings at middleweight. He did go on a good run. And I think Chris Curtis is a fun matchup for him that's approachable because they both have the exact same problem. They both love to complain when the other guy doesn't run into their punches. So something's got to give. Somebody's oh has got to fucking go. And I think Chris Curtis versus Kevin Holland at middleweight is a good fight. Good to add on maybe a Sean Strickland card. Maybe you add it onto International Fight Week. Maybe you add it onto the McGregor Chandler card. I think Curtis Holland would be a fun fight. And it sets up that Kevin Holland Str Sean Strickland beef because. There is beef there. So if, if Kevin Holland wins this, which it is an approachable matchup for him, if he wins this and maybe he wins one, one more at middleweight, he could fight Sean Strickland. That could be a huge fight. And boom, he's right back in the, in the picture. So I think Chris Curtis versus Kevin Holland is actually a pretty smart idea. As for what's next for MVP, I know we all want to see this fight, dude. Okay, I know we all want to see MVP versus Wonderboy, but they're friends and they're saying they don't want to fight each other. And obviously, we all don't like when that happens, but I have to respect that. I have to just say, all right, it's probably not going to happen. If it doesn't happen, obviously, maybe they change their mind and the UFC goes, no, you're going to fucking fight each other. That'd be awesome. Obviously, I want to see Wonderboy versus MVP. But if we can't get Wonderboy versus MVP, give me Jeff Neal versus MVP. I want to see MVP dance around this guy who has one shot KO power if he can get a hold of you against the fence. All likelihood, Jeff Neal probably sells this fight just like Kevin Holland and misses, does nothing the entire fight, complains about it. But we might get a highlight real KO from, from MVP. And this is a solid step up into the top 10. He just fought Ian Gary. And yeah, makes sense. If he wins this one, he's going into a top five title elimination bout. He, he wants to get to the belt in like three fights. And I think if he wants to do that, Jeff Neal is a pretty good option if you can't get Wonderboy. But yeah, I'm excited for MVP in the UFC, man. Um, let's talk about the co-main event and the main event. Starting off with what's next for Benoit St. Denis. Obviously, he's going to need some time off. He just got knocked out by Dusty. You know, Benoit's a good dude. He's going to bounce back, dude. You know, he's a, he's a good dude. He's a solid competitor. You know, uh, you know, don't, don't count all them chickens, man. You know, the guy said he was going to kill me. The guy, the guy said he was a soldier. I fucking killed him, dude. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, all jokes aside, <laughs> Benoit St. Denis is going to need time off. And I think when he comes back, he should fight the winner 
of Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. I think Benoit versus Bobby Green would be a fucking banger. And even if Jim Miller wins, that would be fucking sick. That would be fire on like a Paris fight night card, co-main event, Benoit versus Jim Miller, Benoit versus Bobby Green, three rounds, he's chasing them down, they're trying to fucking find a way out. I think that'd be a good bounce back win for him. And it'd be an exciting scrap. It'd still be a good test for him because Bobby Green does have that one-shot fluky flukes to KO power, uh, just like we saw against Grant Dawson. So I think Benoit versus Bobby Green is a pretty solid shout. And that'd be a fun fight, in my opinion. I think it'd be funny to see Bobby Green interact with this fucking guy as well. As for what's next for Poirier, dude, it's pretty tricky. I don't really know because I'm not giving this guy a title shot. And I know now he's going to be mad. We've just squashed the beef. He's going to fucking kill me now that I, he's going to throw a guillotine on me now that I didn't give him a title shot. Hear me out, bro. Let's do the trilogy. Fuck it. Let's do the trilogy. I think poor, I think, I think Max Holloway is going to beat Justin Gaethje. I've changed my mind. I think just, I think Max Holloway is going to beat Justin Gaethje. And I think Max Holloway is going to be in title contention. Justin Gaethje is going to be on the verge of retirement. And I would say, let's do either a double retirement or loser leaves town type of fight. Gaethje versus Poirier three. Both fights were bangers. Both fights ended with a bang. Main event of a pay-per-view. Put it in like California. Put it in Arizona. Put it somewhere cool. Let's build a sick fucking pay-per-view underneath it. Let's do Gaethje versus uh, Poirier 3. And like I said, the loser can retire. Maybe they do a double retirement. It's a fan-friendly matchup. I think this makes a lot of sense, especially because Poirier is probably going to take some time off after this fight. He usually does that. And the timelines make sense. If Max Holloway loses to Justin Gaethje, I could weirdly see it being like a flash TKO, KO type situation. Or he just loses a decision where he, he takes some damage, but he's just in Gaethje. I think by the end of the year, we could do Gaethje versus Poirier 3. That'd be a good matchup. Let's move on to the main event. Marlon Chito Vera, the fluky flukester. He did not pull it off. He took a lot of fucking damage. Like his face got busted up. He's going to need some time off. I think he, he comes back maybe early next year. And I'm just realizing that I should have given him a different fight because I remembered someone else is in the division. I think off the top of my head, Marlon Vera versus uh, Kyla Phillips is a fun fight. He trains in the same team as, o as O'Malley. So it's a similar stylistic matchup where if he gets the win, you could say, you know what? Cheeto's made some improvements. He just got fucking whooped by O'Malley. So I don't think he deserves to just fight Piotr Jan or fight Henry Cejudo or Song Yudong when he kind of got gifted this title shot. I think he should have to fight pretty far down the rankings. and. Kyla Phillips is probably going to be ranked number 13, number 12 for beating Pedro Munoz. I would say, you know, 7 versus 12 is pretty solid for the co-main event of a fight night. Maybe a big fight on a pay-per-view. Cheeto versus Kyla Phillips would be good. Or, I think I would have made this fight if Cheeto didn't take any damage. I would love to see Cheeto versus Figueredo. I would love to see Cheeto Vera versus Figueredo. I kind of wish I made that fight instead. But if we don't get that, give me Kyla Phillips versus Pe uh. Cheeto Vera. That'd be a good fight. All right, dude. Last one. Main event. I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Sean O'Malley. Why the fuck do you want to fight Ilya Taporia, bro? Defend your belt. Defend your fucking belt. Get the free legacy of Chinning Marab because people actually think he's going to beat you and he's not, bro. Sean O'Malley. Dude, imagine ducking Marab, dude. Please. O'Malley, please. Chin Marab, I promise you inside two rounds, you will chin this fucking guy. He's smaller than Aljo. He, he is less likely to finish you than Aljo. His chin is worse than Aljo or similar to Aljo. And again, he's not as good as Aljo. He has better cardio. That's it. He's strong. He has better cardio. I think Sean O'Malley would make Marab look fucking stupid on the feet. And I think he would chin him inside two rounds. I really do. I think he'd catch him with a left hook. And then he'd follow up with a head kick or he'd knee him upside the face and then left hook him, put him on his ass and finish him, dude. So I don't think Sean O'Malley should be trying to fight Taporia. I think he should let Taporia fight in at featherweight, see what his weaknesses are because he basically did show nothing against Volkanovski. It was such a short fight. Let him fight Evloev. Let him fight a Holloway. See what Holloway can do against him, right? In the meantime, collect your free legacy by defending against Marab, who does deserve it, by the way. I'm not just saying this to shit on Marab. Marab deserves a shot. I would much rather see O'Malley versus Marab 
then I would see O'Malley versus Teporia. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below. What fights would you like to see after UFC 299? Uh, sorry if I'm a bit tired in this video, man. I've been out all day. I've been, I just went for a run. I just came back to record this video. But let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel for more matchmaking, more tier lists, more videos, uh, rant videos like yesterday. Um, if you want to see the MMA impressions tier list, subscribe to the channel right fucking now because that 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to do the bedtime MMA impressions tier list with everybody on it. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, drop a like, comment your thoughts down below and go follow me on Instagram at bedtime MMA. Appreciate all you guys. Have a good one. Goodbye.